delighted to say that Kevin Rowland is on the line with me from Dexies right now. Kevin, it's so fantastic to have this new single from Dexies, and it feels like a very optimistic track. Is that is this the mood we find yourself in in 2023? I think so, and certainly working at being optimistic. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me, and uh, yeah, certainly working at being optimistic. Yeah, yeah, why not? Good. It's said that the the record is the thoughts of a man as his views change over time. Is this your way of writing an autobiography? No, no. Um, you know, it's not it's not one hundred percent autobiographical. There's a lot of me in there. Yeah. But I'm not saying that it's you know that it's one hundred percent autobiographical. Um, so yeah, no, no, it's not. But it, it is a journey. And I, I think the same as the last album of original material from Dexys was um, One Day I'm Going to Soar. And again, we had a narrative, you know, I think I like an album that has a journey, tells a story rather than just, you know, a bunch of songs. Yeah, I agree. I completely love albums like that as well. Is this the, is this, um, does this mean that, you know, there's there's different styles of song on there as well? You know, you've got this optimistic one is the, is the first single that's came out, but is there some some ballads on there as well? Yeah, there's some ballads on there. It's 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 it. it yeah, I mean, there's some. It traces. Uh, it's a, yeah. There's different musical styles, but it traces the journey of a man who starts off kind of pretending to be quite macho and all that, and then in the second song he says, "You know what? That's not really how I feel." And then he kind of looks at himself over the next couple of songs. Then he examines his relationship with women, his attitude towards women, and then he gets into a relationship, and then you know that's kind of quite interested in itself and then then it then it resolves you know um yeah there's different styles yeah um how important is having the likes of big jim patterson on this record and you've got people like sean reed as well and mike timothy working on that i mean how important are they to to the process and if you could give the listeners a little bit of an insight to your process now and has it changed over the years sure um yeah, it's massively important to have. I mean, you know, it kind of ain't really Dexys without Jim. I mean, you know, Big Jim, he's just such a massive part of it. His soul is in it. And although he's not going to be touring with us because he wouldn't mind me telling you he's got, um, you know, personal issues with his family that he has to look after. You know, he's looked mm-hmm. after his wife right now. She's very, he's been very ill. And... Um, <clears throat> um, but he's always going to be a member of Dexys, you know. Um Sean and Mike, you know, they've been with us 10 years now, a good 10 years. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's very important. People often think of Dexys, and, and if they think of Dexys, they think of me and, they, you know, that it's about me. But I'm the front man, but I'm not a solo artist by any means. I cannot do this on my own. If I could, I would, mm. but I can't. I need Jim. I need Sean. I need Mike. They're good guys, and I depend on them, you know. Um I think the songwriting has been a little bit easier this week, this, not this week, this, this time on this album, because um, we've, you know, uh, me and Jim used to kind of sit down and write every, go over, over everything, every hi-hat pattern, every bass, everything. until we got it how we wanted it. And then we take it to the musicians. But now, you know, more and more Mike and Sean are coming up with ideas and we're, and we're working from there. So it's changed and it's, um, it's definitely less me and more of a band. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, are you still are you constantly writing, Kevin? Do you do you often write down thoughts, lyrics, expressions, that kind of thing? And then it comes to the time to nail down a narrative for a record. You've got some in, in, in the vault, if you like. Um, I don't really. Um, I do when I'm in that process, when I'm in the writing process, once I kind of open that portal, the ideas start coming. And if I wake up at three in the morning with an idea, I'll, I'll just get up and I'll or not necessarily get up, but I'll just grab my laptop and sit in bed and write it down or whatever, or sing it into the tape recorder or whatever it is. And um, yeah, so when I'm in that process, I get ideas coming all the time, but I've gone through quite a few periods where I just think, oh, I just need to get away from music now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, during that period, I don't, I don't think about it at all from, from a writing point of view. But I, lo- I, I kind of like it better when I'm creating. I feel better, you know. Good. Um, what influences you now? Is it still that real deep love and passion for music or is it life and your experiences or is it in equal measure? Because I guess that's the essence of of soul music, isn't it? It's life experience and and passion, isn't it? it, it yeah, it, it's it's both. And I think it's probably number one life experiences because um, 
if I've not got something to say, I, I can't really write. I just don't get around to it. I just haven't got anything. I just feel like I haven't got anything to write, I to say. And um, and what happened after 2016, we did the Irish and Country, and I just found the experience of of that album. And, you know, the album, I was happy with it, but working with the major label, they were nice guys and everything, but I just felt like I didn't feel good. I didn't feel great. So I kind of needed a break, and I didn't really think I had anything musical to say. And at that point... I couldn't imagine a time when I would. So I was thinking, I'm just not going to do music anymore. But then about 2019, 2020, I just thought, oh, you know, I wouldn't mind doing some music now. And then it was a question of, okay, what have I got? What have we got? What songs have we got? Like, okay, that one's good. Yeah, I can use that. If I twist that one around, we can use that. And then the ideas start coming. Once yeah. I'm open to it. Yeah, that seems to be how it works. And then... Yeah, and it's always, you know, it's kind of soulish, really. It's that, that that you know, that's my roots, really. Yeah. You know. And how would you rate this record alongside your previous works? I think they're all different. Yeah. I think they're all different. I, I, I find it very hard to, to rate them, really. I mean, I think it's right up there. I think possibly One Day I'm Gonna Soar up to this point was the best album we've made. I think I need time with this and, you know, and see its reaction as well on people. But um, I... I I tell you what I do think. I think it's the most commercial thing we've done since the eighties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's like interesting. And there's this we we could have chosen any one of four for the for the first single. There was a big debate about it with the with the record label. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's we a could've... good a good debate to have, isn't it? You yeah. know. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's good. Oh, yeah. No, we slaved over which one. You know. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely definitely a commercial album. Do you ever, do you ever get to reflect on your career to date and how significant your your music has been to culture? Um, I I I I do reflect on that sometimes, and um, but I I you know I'm not looking for compliments, and I'm not this is not false modesty, but I don't think that we've had a massive impact on culture. Well, uh, oh. let let me tell you, Kevin, I started a band. Uh, about 15 years ago, that w we wanted to sound a bit like um, Orange Juice and Dexy's Midnight Runners mixed together with a bit of the Smiths in there as well. And I grew up in the city of Sunderland, which is quite yeah. far, I imagine, where from where you are right now. And yeah. you were heavily an, a, a major influence on on our band. We we got signed. We ended up working with some people I believe you might have worked with uh, in the form of Mark Bowen and Dick Green. They signed okay. us because because we sounded like Dexy's Midnight Runners. So you have a huge, huge cultural influence. And um, uh, it's a pleasure to be speaking to you on the call right now. Um, bless you, man. Um, well, I had no idea. That's really that's really nice. Thank you. But I just don't think culturally in terms of fashion or anything like that, you know, I think the 80s was about new romantics or whatever, you know, in the early part of it. And then Acid House later on. And I don't know. Anyway, but that's nice to know. Thank you. No, no problem at all. Uh, final final question. Uh, we, yeah. we, we can't wait to, to hear the record in, in, in full, but you've also announced some some tour dates as well. Are you happy to be going out on the road in September? You know, honestly, I'm really nervous about it at the moment. Um you know, I've got to get my voice. Um, I had a motorbike uh, accident last year and did my leg. It's all right now. It's getting better. But um, so, but it affected my fitness and all of that. You know, I was laid up for six months. So um, I've got to build up my strength, you know. But yeah, we've got some good ideas. We're going to, you know, I'm up for the show. It's just on a personal level, you know, I'm just, you know, I always get anxious. But I'm working hard on it. And the show is going to be the first half. It's in two halves. The first half, we're going to perform dramatically. In other words, we're going to act out the album uh, on stage, you know, with, with um, uh, my, mainly myself and, and, and uh, Claudia, uh, the female. Mm -hmm. And um, then there's an intermission. Then we're going to play the old stuff. Yeah, you did a little bit of that, didn't you, on on um, One Day I'm Going to Saw, around that period. It was very dramatic, the stage performance as well. I loved it as well. I, I went and saw you a couple of times. It was fantastic. Did you really? Yes, I did, yeah. Oh, man, that's nice to know. That's nice to know. <laughs> so it's a similar kind of approach in terms yeah. of you've got to take people on on the, a full journey through the record. Yeah. Totally, totally, totally. We're going to act out the songs on stage for the first half of the show, the new album, from start to finish. And then an intermission, then the old stuff, yeah. Fantastic. Kevin, thanks so much for taking the time to speak to me today. And you are genuinely a, a, a huge influence on me and my, my life. So thank you so much for speaking. Thank you so much, Frankie. It was good to meet you, mate. Thank you. Appreciate what you said.